<clears throat> hey everybody, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts and today I'm going to bring you a video on making one of my no-sew pouches. I haven't made one of these in a while and most of the pouches that I've made in the past have been um, to use as covers for my uh, compact mirrors. And today I decided I want to do one that's slightly bigger and just make it really shabby chic out and I just was in the mood to do something different today and fun. This is something that I really enjoy doing, extremely therapeutic and so <laughs> this is what we're going to do today. And I just pulled a bunch of things out of my stash um, to possibly use on this and I took out extras just so that I could change my mind. Um, during the process because you guys all know that I like to change my mind a lot um, and so I think this is going to be really fun now it's not going to be a super short video today so um, be prepared and um, let's have some fun so what I'm going to do is I've got all of these beautiful a bunch of my rolled roses that I've made um, out of some of the fabrics and things I've gotten. I adore these roses. Um, this is some chiffon fabric that I got. I don't know if it's chiffon or organza. Actually, I think it's organza. Um, that I got from my friend Gail and it made the most beautiful roses and the reason I like them so much is that they came out rather flat which works good on a project like this um, because they're not too, they don't protrude too, too much out of the, the project. And I've got a bunch of other ones that I've made. Um, a little crocheted flower that I got in some of my Happy Mail from Gail. And I've got some other flowers that I made. These, these are a couple of my shabby flowers that I did in my video the other day. Um, and this is another one that I kind of learned how to do. It's not my favorite flower, but it's flat and it's, it is actually quite pretty. Um, so I might use that. It's very big though. Um, and then a couple of my applique flowers. And again, I won't be using all of them, but I took them all out just in case I want to change my mind during the process. And then I have a whole bunch of my laces and things that I got from, um, from Diane. Uh, Jero. Um, I've been calling her Phyllis, but she actually goes by Diane. So <laughs> I've got that right now. Um, so uh, some of this beautiful, beautiful um, lace here that I cannot wait to use. And <clears throat> I just thought that would be really pretty on this. And then some colored lace. This is stuff I've had for a little bit. Actually, I think I got this piece in some Happy Mail that was from Gail as well. And then just some, some plain laces. This is really pretty. A very vintage looking lace and very sheer. And I love that. And this is one of those floppy laces that I love so much. <laughs> um, I've got a little doily here. Don't know if I'm going to use it, but I took it out just in case because it's a nice big lacy doily. It's just cotton in the center with the lace around the edges. And I've been trying to find something to use this in um, and haven't, haven't really come up with the perfect project yet. I've got some of my trims. I got this from Kiki's. And you guys know this is one of my favorite trims to use. This was given to me in Happy Mail by Gail as well. And I got two of them. Look at that. Is that not gorgeous? I just love it. And it's got the little pearl dangles on it. And everything is sort of sewn to this mesh. Um, if you guys can see that. And it's just beautiful, beautiful. And you can see on the back, hopefully, where it's kind of all sewn in there. I'm afraid, I'm kind of afraid to cut it off because I'm afraid I'm going to lose bits and pieces and I don't want to do that but I'm gonna I may give it a try today and then I've got just some other you know smaller lace trims here and some of my dangle trims that Gail sent me I don't know if I'm gonna go with pink though because that's a kind of a bright pink but I got a whole bunch of them 
sitting here. Here's another, just a, a small trim. Here's one of the other dangle trims that she sent me. And she, I guess, heard me saying in one of my videos that I didn't have a lot of dangle trims, and I do like to use these for various things. And so she went through her stash and she grabbed me a few of her her little treasures um, that she had. So look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And then here's another one with a little bit bigger dangles on it. I just love these so much. They look great on pouches too. Um, so that's why I took some of those out. I've got some of my white trim here, some of my little rose trims. And this is a piece of lace that I love and I've had this laying around for a little bit. Gail sent it to me a couple of packages ago and I am I am being very particular on what I use this piece of lace on because it's it really is absolutely stunning. And uh, I don't know which side's the right side. Anyway, it looks good on both sides, so I'm not sure. It looks the same. Um so anyway, I've got this, and look at, it's nice and sheer and floppy as well. And then what I have, I'm going to push this stuff back just a little bit and take a little sip of my coffee. And what I have here, this is just a piece of um, cotton, almost like a linen, but it's a very sheer, uh, thin linen um, that I took off of a little, it was a little hand towel. I think it was from when uh, my mother-in-law and I were making, um, for Christmas one year, we were doing the little hand towels and then we were using the colored markers that you use, the fabric markers, and we were putting little prints on them and, and doing a bunch of that stuff. Well, we had a bunch of these little hand towels left over um, and it was the year that my mother-in-law had passed. And so when she passed away, not only did I have mine, but she left me her stash of crafting uh, stuff. So um, I had a bunch of this fabric left over, and I've had it put away all these years. Um, so I, I found it the other day and I just I dug it dug some of it out and I thought, okay, I'm gonna try this on the outside of this pouch. And then this is just a little piece of um uh what do you call it? Oh my gosh, I'm having brain block. I can't think of it, but sometime during the, the video I'll think of it. Oh my goodness, it's driving me crazy. Um but anyway got this that I'm going to use as my base. Oh, it's going to bug me. Um, shoot. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so first of all, let me go in here and I wanted to pull up a comment that I got from, um, oh, I think I actually printed it. I did, I know I did. Uh, let's see, where is it? Is it here? No. Oh my goodness, where did I put it? Oh, I had a great a really great couple of quotes that um, one of my uh, subscribers left me and oh here it let's see let's see um, oh here it is here it is um, this is from my from my subscriber her name is Brandy and um, Brandy was actually um, the winner of one of my giveaways. She won the, the purple Shabby Chic box that I um, gave away on my YouTube channel. And she really enjoys the reading of the quotes and things. So she sent me a couple that she enjoyed. She actually posted it on one of my videos. Um, and she said, I wanted to share an inspirational quote with you and the ladies on here. Um, so the first one is, I prayed for God to remind you that He not only knows your future, 
he planned it. Pretty powerful. And um, something else that she read that she said touched her heart. Um, it wasn't nails that held Jesus to the cross. It was love. And that's so true. And I try to remind myself of that every single day. What was sacrificed for me and all of us. And, you know, again, I know I hate repeating myself, but the craziness that's going on in this world right now, we all need to get back to the basics and remember um, who brought us here and, uh, you know, what we really need to be concentrating in our lives. So, um, anyway, I thought those were beautiful quotes and I wanted to go ahead and read them on this video. So, thank you, Brenny. I appreciate that. Keep them coming. Um, so any of you, if you have inspirational quotes or things that you want to read or, or send me, please send them over and um, I'll, I'll go ahead and read those on my, uh, during my videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I, I know this is great fabric and all, but this is not really what I want to use as the outside of this pouch. Um, and so... I'm going to actually cover it with this thin bit of um, linen. So what I want to do now, this this pouch here, the size. Now I just cut this. I straightened it out because it was a little crooked and stuff. I just cut it. It's about let's see, six and a half inches wide, and the entire piece of um, fabric here is, uh, let's see, what do we have? We have 15 inches. So, that was about the size that I thought was kind of perfect for this little pouch. I didn't want it to be huge, but I didn't want it to be teeny tiny like my compact pouches either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, and this is a no-sew pouch, so there will be no sewing on this. However, if you are a a person who likes to sew, you could do this on your sewing machine. I could do this on my sewing machine, but I just don't don't get into sewing very much anymore. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to place my fabric like this. This is going to be the inside of the bag. So I don't want the, um, the fuzzy part on the inside because it will collect anything that, that touches it. So... Let me just straighten this out here. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to sit on there just fine. And then I'm going to take my glue gun and I'm just going to I'm going to go along. In fact, I think I'll do the ends first like this. So trying to think. On these ends, I think I'm going to fold it over and then fold it over again. And I'm just going to hold that down because I want it to look, have somewhat of a finished look on the inside. And this is how I can achieve that. So there we go. One end done. And this end is already, I left the hem in there. Um, just so that it would, at least I had some nice edges, but we're going to go ahead and just make it nice anyway. We're going to fold it over. And now I'm in a bad direction because I'm not left-handed. So we're just going to put this like this. And I'll go right along here with my glue and press it down. Okay, so that's down. So now we've got it all set on the ends. And then I'm going to take and do the same thing, but I am going to, let's see, I think I'll glue the center part down first and then I'll cut my edges. And again, I'm going to fold it over and do just like I did on the other ends. And we'll just kind of go to right there. 
because I am going to cut some of this off at the corners so that it's not bulky. And, and this is so fun, you guys. I know it's not sewn and all that stuff, but it's so fun to make these. And these don't have to be something you carry around. It could be a little pouch that you hang, you know, in your bedroom somewhere as uh, decoration or that you can put little goodies in, you know, so that it, um, it holds like little, I don't know what you would put in it. You could put uh, little bits of jewelry or... Um, you know, like your favorite pieces and things that, you know, you want to keep in a, a special place or what have you. It just is a fun little decorative piece. And I'm just going to, I'm just taking some of the bulk out of this right now. And I'm going to fold it in and fold that edge in. And we're going to glue this down right there in the corner. And I got a little bit of an ooze, but that's okay because that'll come right off of there. Just like that. Okay. And then let's get this side and I'm going to debulk it. Just a little bit. And I'm going to fold it over. And we'll glue that piece down. Just like that. It's nothing fancy, you guys. This is not fancy schmancy, but when it is done, it is going to look fancy schmancy. And I just think that these are awesome. I'm going to go ahead and I am going to cut off this edge here that's already sort of hemmed because it's just going to create bulk that I don't want. So. We're just going to cut that strip off and I'll use that. I'll save that strip and use it to uh, do something else with at another time. So I'm going to, let's just start at this end, debulk this a little bit, and debulk this a little bit. And I'm going to fold it twice. And I'm just trying to make kind of a nice corner here, too, so that it's not, you know, poking out and you don't have any of those edges poking out of it either. So we'll just very gently fold these over and press them down. I've been making these pouches forever. This is kind of one of my earlier... Um, things that I used to do when really in the beginning when I started my my Etsy store and my channel I was doing a lot a lot a lot of compact mirrors and I do still love making those but I just had to get out and and expand my horizons a little bit and start doing a lot of other things and man I'm having so much fun you guys I just love crafting. I could, I, I really, I have to tell you guys, I spend most of my time crafting. I'm a workaholic when it comes to this, um, because that's just how much I love doing it. And so sometimes I have to dial myself back a little bit and take a break, which you don't do very often. But um, my husband reminds me sometimes that I need to take a step back for a minute and do other things. So I do. Not too often, but I do do it. Okay. So. Don't care for this corner here. So I'm going to go ahead and fold that under and re-glue this corner. There. Not perfect, but that's okay. Okay, so now we've got, this is what we have on the other side. And this is the outside of our pouch. 
Chenille. <laughs> it just came to me. Chenille. Oh my gosh, I couldn't, I, I knew it, I knew what it started with and I love chenille so much. Um, it's one of my favorite things. I have a little uh, blanket that I've cut up and I've got it. It's a. It's going to be a rag quilt. I cut it up three years ago and I need to make that little chenille baby blanket. And I think I'm going to do that this year before Christmas and give it to my granddaughter um, for Christmas because it's about time that little chenille blanket got made. And it's gonna be absolutely beautiful. It's got a bunch of chenille squares in it and then just some other cotton fabrics and stuff. And it's gonna be so, so pretty. And I, back in the day when I was making rag quilts, I bought a whole bunch of chenille um, pieces and things from uh, eBay. And so, E oh, eBay and I bought some bits and pieces from Etsy as well because there were some sellers that had some really gorgeous chenilles and so I bought a whole bunch of scraps and started cutting them up and and putting them together for blankets and I made all the blankets but I have not finished that one blanket yet and it's about time and it's in like dusty mauves and and stuff so it's really really going to be pretty when it's done okay so the next thing that we're going to do is because this is going to be the outside we want our um our edges to be clean so i'm going to take it and fold it just like this and get it all square and so in the end, the pouch is going to be about seven and three quarters deep. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my edges here. And I'm trying to think of where I want this glue to hit. I'm going to go along the edge here and I'm going in about, I'm going to say about a quarter of an inch. I'm going to press that down really well. And you want to make sure that that glue has um, adhered. You know what I should be using? I didn't even think about it. I should be using my Fabri-Tac. And in fact, I might go along with a line of this on the inside if I can get in there. I just don't want to mess this up now. Ugh, I'm not going to do it on this side, but I am going to put, I just don't want to mess that up on the inside. I'm going to put a line of Fabri-Tac and I am going to put a line of hot glue because I do need this to stick right away. So, I'm just going to press that down. Give it just a second and put my lid back on my Fabri-Tac. So this is what I used, a Fabri-Fix is what it's called. And it's by Beacon. So it bonds fabrics, lace, leather, trims, and more. So this is what I used on that and then my hot glue is Gorilla hot glue and I just buy it on Amazon um, I like the Gorilla hot glue because I feel like it sticks better and and stays better so than some of the other hot glues so that's why I use that okay so I think we've got this where we can turn it back the right way And we're just going to turn it right side out now. Get down to our corners. And put our finger in there. And you can see it holds really, really well. And it's not like this is a big, um, heavy pouch, you know. 
I am going to take, because I can feel a little bit of that Fabri-Tac there, I'm going to take and go along the inside of this seam with my hot glue and I am going to press it together again on this edge. This is the edge that has the Fabri-Tac on it and that's why I didn't use Fabri-Tac to begin with. I wasn't thinking about that because it does not it does not dry quickly like the hot glue does. And I'm just going to try and poke out my my corners there. And part of me feels like, you know, because I did those nice edges and everything, it's a lot bulkier here. So, here's what we're going to do. And I should have, you know what, I haven't made one of these in so long I wasn't thinking. I should have just gone ahead and, and done it this way to begin with. I'm going to take these edges and I'm going to debulk them a little bit. Um, oh boy, I hate to do that. No, I think we're just going to go with it. It'll be a little bit bulkier on the edges, but that's okay because it's, it's got a cleaner look and I like it so we're just going to go for it. And so you can see that this uh, pouch now I didn't get any glue in this little corner so we'll go ahead and add a dot of glue there. Press it together and there we go. This is the spot that I'm not crazy about up here at the top, but we're, we're going to fix that. We'll be able to fix that in the end, so I'm not going to worry about that. We're just going to have some fun here. But these are fun to make, you guys. These make really great gifts, or you can use it as a gift bag at the holidays to put someone's gift in. So, And this one's nice. It's got this nice inside and it's it's nice and thick and um, uh, it's not going to be fragile so that's kind of where I was going with the chenille I wanted to keep it from being fragile okay so now what we need to do is we need to lace it up so I need to figure out what I'm gonna use see I was thinking about using this to kind of go around it like that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look how pretty that looks. And I'm so excited that I have two of these um, that I can use on a couple of projects. So, um, so it could be that or we could take and cut this in half because if I'm using this I want the lace to go down and not up. So we could put this on there and that's what that would look like very pretty but we're also going to have don't forget the dangles at the bottom as well so and then we've got just our, some of our plain lace but this is just I think just a little too plain and this is a little darker than I want to use I think and then we've got this which looks amazing on here and if I wrap this sort of around as my base lace, I think this, this is going to be really, really nice. And, and it might have been good if I had just uh, tucked it in there with the other fabric and, you know, made it part of the outside. But that's okay. We, don't, we can do it this way. I'm going to put that aside. Put those aside. And we are going to... Cut this along here. Um, I'm going to cut it right here, but I'm going to kind of go around these flowers here because I don't want to cut those off. So it's not going to be a straight cut, but that's okay. I just want to make sure that I don't cut off those flowers because there's no need to do that. Okay. So, I think what I'll do, which side is going to be the front and which side is going to be the back. It doesn't really matter. So, 
We're going to take this and we're just going to kind of wrap it towards the back. And I do need to... Uh, I, think I don't need to really cut the top off. The top has almost like a little jagged kind of a cut. And I'm just checking this. I want to make sure I've got this going the right way. And I do. It really looks good on either side. This lace is almost like double-sided. Getting some more glue here. And we're just going to kind of go along the edge here. And tack that down. Very gently. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm using a very thin, thin, thin bit of glue. But you can see, you can't see that glue coming through the lace. It just is... It doesn't even look like I've glued it down at all. And I think I am going to end up having to cut a little bit off the top edge of this, so we're not going to glue it all the way up to the top. So now I'm going to flip it over, and I'm just going to go along here, and we're going to do this. And then I'm going to lay that across the top and press it down. Okay. And as I do this, it kind of any glue that might have oozed up through there is coming through and it comes right off. So I can't see a bit of glue on the outside of this at all. So then I'm going to take and on the side, I'm going to run just a bead of glue on each edge here and wrap it around. And then I'll just take and use my fingers. These pouches, you guys, I'm serious. They are so fun to make. You have to try it. It's just one of those um, projects that I get a lot of satisfaction from. And it just, it, it's just fun. I'm going to go like that. Now I do have a little edge right here, but that's okay. We don't need to worry about that right now because you have to remember we're going to be covering this up with lots of other goodies and that little edge there is not even going to show once I'm done with it. So I'm just cutting a little bit off the top of this. And I'm not getting a hold of it very well. There we go. Okay, so you can see we have this little edge right here. You can kind of see that. But don't worry about that right now. So again, that's gonna be that's gonna be something that's gonna get covered up and nobody's ever going to know it was there. Okay, so next. We are going to, are we going to risk it and do this? This is so pretty, you guys. I just need to make sure that in cutting this off, I'm looking at the threads on the bottom side. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of glue behind this one. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue behind this one. That way I know that thread is not going to come apart. And then these are just all sewn along the design. So I think I'm going to be fine. We're just going to take it from this corner here. In fact, 
I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to put some glue across that little piece of thread right there too, just in case. And we're going to cut across. Just like that. And I'll put that little piece of mesh aside because I can use that in something else. And we're okay, nothing is loose. I do have a couple of loose little pearls right here that I didn't loosen them just now, but they were already loose. So I'm going to see if I can get my eyeball on those and glue those down right now. Let's take that off of there. Just going to put a little bit of glue right under those little pearls and press them down. And I have a one little pearl here at the end that didn't touch the glue. Okay, can't see a thing. There, now those pearls are all nice and glued down. So, and I'm sorry if this takes me a little extra time to figure this out, you guys, but I don't want to mess this up. No, no, no. And I think, I think I can cut this little piece off underneath these pearls. So I'm going to take this other little strip down below off of here. I glued, remember I glued those pearls down, so I think we're going to be just fine. And I don't think anything's going to, if, if it comes apart, I'll probably cry right here on, on video. There's no probabilities. I will cry if it comes apart. But I've got to get this figured out at some point, and then I'll know what I can and can't do with the other one. Now I've got some threads right here that are kind of bunched up that are coming underneath there. I don't want to cut those threads because they're part of the the design that is above this. So I'm going to make sure that those bits of thread don't get cut. Okay, there we go. Perfect, and it's all staying together. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go along, I think, and I can't find my little scissors, and I don't know what I did with them. I had them yesterday. My little narrow uh, detail scissors, I've got some other ones, but they just don't cut as well, and I cannot find those scissors anywhere. I'm going to excuse myself for just a second. I think there might be one place that they might be, and I'm going to look. there so I just have to go with what I have in front of me here I guess I'm just looking somewhere else here nope and they're probably somewhere here on top of my craft table but if you guys could see around my general working area right now it's kind of a disaster it's time for me to go through and organize again it's like every, I feel like every other day I have to to reorganize everything. So okay, so we're just going to take this and we're going to kind of gently cut around the design here, being careful not to cut any threads that are holding this together. I do have this little jumbled up mess of thread here back on the back side of this so I'm going to take a little bit of glue here 
and just kind of mix it in with that thread and press it down. That way I know I don't have to worry about that coming apart. And then I'll cut this little mess of thread off. Okay. So here we go, you guys. We got it. We did it. And I am going to take these little detail scissors and I am going to go around these flowers here. Get on here so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I'm just going to take it and get as close to these flowers as I can and these pearls. And I'm going to go around the whole design because I don't want a bunch of that mesh just kind of sticking out everywhere. And when you're working with this stuff, you guys, don't be afraid to give it a try. If you if you don't ever give it a try, you know, then you have a piece like this that's so gorgeous and it's sitting around and because you're afraid to mess with it, you never ever use it. And I know, I do it too. I, I scare myself into not using a lot of my stuff because I don't want to ruin it, but... I generally eventually will get the guts to do it and give it a try and it almost always works out okay. But if you never try then you've got that beautiful whatever it is and you never use it and it doesn't do you any good when you're gone. So I just feel like I've got to take the risk and just go for it and this this is just so pretty I've had this actually I think I got this from Gail a couple of months ago or a month ago at least and I keep pulling it out of my stash and pulling it out of my stash and thinking okay I really want to use this and then I put it right back in and that's not okay and I'm thinking maybe if I bring it down just a little bit so that the I'm not gonna turn it around I'm still getting used to the fact that you guys can see what I'm doing from the right direction again okay so I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna be folding that edge around the back side and so it'll come up a little bit on the back side as well and then we've got these pretty dangles. I'm still going to be adding some dangle trim that will go, you know, somewhere here. Probably not that one. You know, down at the bottom. Um, this one's really kind of cool, but it's very long. And this one I really like. And I think it would go really nicely with that. And then there's this one, but this one I don't know that I have enough of to do both sides. And it's a very kind of more sparse piece, and it's got a tear out in it. So we don't want to go with that one. Um, so it's either this one. This one I don't think has enough length in it or this one let's let's just put this one under here I want to see what this looks like so if I take that and go right about there that looks really kind of cool I really like it and let's do this one one more time Because I know I have enough of both of these to do to go around the entire bag. And that one is a little less long. But you know what? I'm going to go for the other one. I think we're going to use this trim. 
And so we want to put this on first. And I'm going to start sort of at the side here and work my way around. Let me just see where I want to place it. I think I'll place it right about there. This is so neat, you guys. I just love this. I see this little section here seems to have little bits that are still stuck together. I'm not sure why, but we're going to take those apart. Because I do want them to dangle and just be fringe. But I don't want to cut them off while I'm trying to do this. So there we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to leave just a little bit, about a half an inch over the edge here, and we're just going to start gluing this on. And it needs to go this way. There again, I almost did it the wrong direction. So let's just go ahead and start. I think I'm going to put the glue along the edge of this piece here. You guys, I cannot wait to see what this is going to look like when it's done. I am super excited about it. And honestly, when I make these, just so you guys know, these pouches actually sell really well. I, I'm able to um, make one of these pouches, and they usually get purchased fairly quickly. I mean, there's there's been times when they've sat a little bit longer, but... People seem to really like these and they make excellent decorations and what I'll try and do is take some photos um, maybe if I can find a nice spot in the house to hang it from or to, to lay it on top of you know some some lace or something oops I want to do this this way um, so that you can just see how really pretty they look as a decorative piece. I think they're awesome. Okay, we're going to take this little edge that's sticking out here and we're going to fold that over. So it just barely comes around to the back. And then we'll take this piece and I'm going to cut it right there. And we'll Tack that down and then I'm also gonna put a little glue on the the side pieces too there so that's what that looks like get these little bits of glue off of here so that's what that looks like and then also I did get that glued on on this side I need to tack this down on the back side here I'm just going to put a tiny little strip of glue right there so that that's tacked down and you can see no glue sticking out anywhere okay so there's the bottom piece and then uh, I just want to make sure I do this all in the right order you guys I don't want to mess anything up here I've got these other bits and pieces too that I want to use some of this lace in here and I'm thinking my thought process is that this will go sort of towards the top so we've got this down here at the bottom and the V right here is going to come down to the bottom part of the pouch and then this you can see how that arch there just kind of comes up over that flower in the middle. So this would be a great bag for a bride, actually, I think. We'll see when we get it done, but I think this would be an awesome piece for a bride to carry in the um, wedding or during the reception to put her dollars from the dollar dance in. 
<laughs> okay, and I'm just going to very carefully glue all of these bits down. And I have a little tiny piece of thread right there to cut off. And I'm just going along the edges here. That's what I'm gluing down right now. So I'm kind of going around the design. Starting from the top and working my way around. And you guys, I'm sure you all have fabric laying around somewhere that you can start a pouch with. And what I would like to do, I think, which would be really fun, and see these don't quite come together in the back, but that's okay, because we're going to remedy that um, by putting something in between that will cover up sort of that little blank spot. But first I want to get all of this glued down the way I want it. So that's what you've got in the back. You have this little blank spot here, but we're not going to worry about that. And that's the back side and that's the front side. Can you believe this, you guys? It's so pretty. Then, also, I did not glue this down on this edge, so we're going to press that down right there so it's not all bunchy. And now I'm going to take on the underside where the V goes, and we're going to just go along that area and maybe in the center here a little bit. And I'm pulling those pearls out of the way because I don't want to glue those down. There. Oh, so pretty. Oh my gosh. I'm going to be making more of these, I can tell already. <laughs> okay. Now, let's take... Where is the other one? I have another lace that's similar to this one here see we've got the, the two you can see they're just um, actually I think that really the biggest difference I mean they're different but the biggest difference is this is more cream and this is more white and I'm the other stuff that I'm using is more of a creamy barely off-white lace so we're gonna stick with that theme. So let's just see. I think we're going to do this so that that comes up to the top. And I'm wondering, yeah, we're going to do it just like that. So let me cut this little bit off. And you guys don't throw away these little bits and pieces because if I was to throw this away, my dear friend Gail would scold me for that <laughs> because she always says you don't throw away your little snippets because these become valuable uh, pieces when you need just a little snippet for something that you're trying to finish off and you just need that one little thing. Those little bits and pieces are amazing. So I'm just going to take this. I'm not going to cut this yet. I'm going to just take it and start gluing it around, starting with this edge, just like that. Oh, you guys, this is going to be so fun. And I'm just going along these little edge bits and then I'll just kind of put a little bit of glue here and there.
to glue down these these center the the flowers and stuff and as I go around I'll just get these little tips and things and you don't have to put a ton of glue on this you guys don't over glue your projects because if you do that, then you've got all these oozy bits of hard glue that stick out everywhere. And just don't overdo it. I, I know a lot of people tend to overdo it with the glue because they're afraid it'll come apart. But no, <laughs> don't overdo your glue. <laughs> if, I, if I have any pet peeves at all, it's probably um, over gluing. <laughs> And when I first started doing a lot of crafting and stuff, I used to think that, you know, you had to use a lot of glue to make sure things stayed down and all of that. And you really just don't, you guys. You don't have to overdo it with the glue. Because then it just looks like a sloppy mess. And I'm not into sloppy messes. And, and the, the bottom line is, for me, I have to be more careful because I do sell my, my pieces. And so I have to make sure that I'm, you know, being neat about the work that I'm doing. So I'm going to cut this around this one flower here. Oh, I've got a pearl right in the middle there. Okay, we're going to go right there. I was trying to cut into a pearl. And we'll just pull that around and, and make that meet up with the other piece. And I'm going to get glue on the edges. And there we go. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so pretty. Okay, and I'm going to put you on pause for just a moment. Okay, so let's get busy here and figure out how we want this to all come together. So, I'm going to take this little piece of um, lace applique trim that I got from Diane and we're going to put this on first and not covering too much stuff up. I think we're going to put this down in this lower corner just like that. So this is where I have to make my decisions and stick to them. It's not easy for me. I want these to kind of flow a little bit, so I don't want to, I'm not going to glue down the edges of these leaves. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the center of them and get them stuck down a little bit, but not, not to where they're laying flat down on the other lace. So, these are some of the flowers that I think I've decided I want to go with. I had originally thought I would use this lace flower here, and it looks gorgeous on there, but it takes up the whole space, and I don't want to cover everything up with that, although these other flowers are going to kind of do the same, but they put a little bit better mix of color in here, because I do want to add some color. I'm not going to use this today because it's just got too much bright pink in it, uh, for this, I think I want to keep it more um, on an elegant look. So um, I think using these more muted colors will be better. So I'm thinking I'll put some of these flowers in here. Don't know if I'm going to use this one or not, but we shall see. See if I stick with maybe these colors. I'm feeling like it all just kind of comes together. And then I've got this other um, mauve color 
of the rolled roses that I made that if I stick a little bit of that in it kind of goes with the the color in this but yet it's not busy so I thought about using a little piece of this uh, gold in here too because I thought that might add a little touch of sparkle without making it overly so we're just going to cut a little piece of this off the end here and maybe cut this sort of in half and I'm going to put those aside I'm not going to put those in right off the bat because I want to get my flowers on there first so we're just going to go ahead and start putting these flowers on I did not put backings on these flowers because I knew they were going to just get glued down so I didn't didn't worry about putting a backing on it it's not going to come apart at any given time so it's going to be fine so that's going to go there I also have this pretty flower that I'm thinking might look really nice in there and add a little bit of um, texture to it so to speak so I'm going to just kind of look at it here and see do I want to go that way or do I want to go more with just the creams and maybe a little bit of that that actually does look pretty in there this I got this from Kiki's um, Debbie makes these herself and they're just beautiful flowers she is an excellent crafter and I don't know why she doesn't do more of it I know she used to she doesn't do a lot of crafting these days but man is she good and she 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 exudes excellence in her work and um, I think sometimes she's a little harder on herself than she should be as far as her crafts go um, she's She's always looking for perfection, and she's already got it. I'm telling you, she has got it. I've got a little bit of a piece hanging off there I don't want. Make sure I don't have any more frayed bits on these. A little bit there. Okay, so that one's down. Um... Sorry, you guys. I just I have to I have to get this right, and I'm gonna put that one away because I just don't think that one needs to go there. It's between these and this, and the more I'm looking at this one, the more I'm really liking it. So I think we're gonna put this one right there. Press it down. And now I just got to decide what direction I want to go with this. Okay, I think that looks nice, and that way I've got a little bit more of this flower poking out on the side. I'm sorry, I've got a hair going across my eyelashes, and I can't see. Okay, so... Okay, we're going to put this one here. Almost time for more glue. Press that in. I thought about using, originally I was going to use both of these flowers in there, but again, I just don't, I don't want to go too far and end up putting so much stuff in here that I make it gaudy and I think that looks good right there so we're gonna 
make the decision and put that right there. I'm sorry you guys, I've got such a mess here on my table. And then we've got our little pieces of gold. And you can see these just have little curly cues that come off of them and that's why I like it so much because you can just kind of poke it in there and just have a little tiny bit of that sparkle popping out but it's not so much that it's looking, you know, I'll use the word again, that it, it doesn't look gaudy. And where did my toothpicks go? Here I go. Okay, well, we're just going to use our finger on this and hope we don't burn it. There they are. Okay, let's put a toothpick right there <laughs> so that I can use it on this piece. And then this one, I think maybe we'll just have it coming out. Actually, I think I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm going to cut this in half. I'm going to put a little dot of glue right there, pop that one down, and I'm going to use my toothpick this time. So we've got a little bit of it popping out there, and we're going to put a little bit back in this corner. And that's the end of that glue stick. Make sure you always have plenty of glue standing by when you're doing your projects so you don't have to go hunting for it later on. There's a little piece there. And we'll put a little dot right here. There we go. And I'm going to cut that so that those curly cues can just sort of stick out there and go in different directions. Maybe that little piece right there. Just a teeny tiny piece, but that's okay. Don't want to waste. There. So you just get a little tiny bit there. Okay, so that's where we're at now. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so pretty. I'll put those flowers aside. And now I've got my, um, my pearl trim that Diane sent me as well. And, whoops, that's not it. I grabbed something that was next to it and somehow I got this all unraveled off of its little board here so we're gonna take this and put it across the top of the bag so I'm gonna start with the edge and I'm gonna try and get this as close to the top as I can And make sure that those pearls are not going to come off of there. And we'll just gently wrap this around the entire top edge of the bag.
just like that. Oh, you guys, I sold my ruby red slipper. I'm so excited. And I sold it to somebody that I just adore. My friend Carol. Um, she had left me a little message. And Carol, I, I have to tell everybody what you did. Um, she said she got in my store and she saw that it was still there. And because I guess she wanted to buy it and had to wait. Um, and so when she saw it was there, she said she cried and she hit that buy button. Um, and so then she sent me a private message um, in Messenger saying that she had she had bought the the shoe. And that it made her cry when she bought it because she was so excited. And then she sent me another message. And it, I, I, I don't want to embarrass her or anything, but oh my goodness. She sent me a voice message. And in that voice message, you know, she, she thanked me and all that good stuff. And told me how excited she was to get it. And, um... Then she left me another voice message and she sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And I'm going to tell you guys, this woman has the voice of an angel. And I cried like a baby when I heard her sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Oh my goodness. I, I'm about to cry right now just thinking about it. Beautiful. It was beautiful. And I told her that message will stay on my phone in my messages forever. Um, it, it really, really had an effect on me and uh, because I know how much I love the movie and it has, the movie not only is, a, is it a great movie and I love it, it, it has other meaning to me um, outside of um, just, you know, the, the incredible magic of the whole movie. Um, the message that it sends, um, if you really pay attention, you know, is a beautiful message. And so that song, someday when I go over the rainbow, I want that song played at my memorial or whatever it is anybody does for me. I want somebody to sing that song. And um, so her leaving that message to me was just, it took me over the top. It literally took me over the top. And I was overjoyed and um, filled with emotion. So Carol, I just want you to know, I, believe this when I say it was such a pleasure to get that message from you and and it's a pleasure knowing that you're going to be the person that is going to um, have that ruby slipper and I couldn't I just could not be happier I just could not be happier and um, I'm super excited about that. I just am super excited. And I appreciate you, Carol, so much. And I just, I have to say thank you, thank you, thank you. My cup runneth over. Um, and that's all I can say. <laughs> so, so, so sweet. Okay, so we've got that edge on there. And now what I need to do is I need to figure out how we're going to do the top of this. And I'm going to, I'm thinking of using this pretty, I got this trim at one of my little local shops. And it's just a simple trim. It's kind of like the stuff that I use, uh, this trim that I use all the time. The only thing is, is this is super strong. 
This is not quite as, as strong, but it's still done with like a, an embroidery thread, so it is strong enough to hold this pouch. Um, but I'm trying to decide, do I want to use this or do I want to use this trim? And so I need to get a look at it with everything on there. This really does look good and it really is a sturdy trim and since I'm going to use it for the handle, I think this might be the better route to go. Um, but I just, I need to, to figure it out here. But I think I wanna go around the edge of this trim as well at the bottom of it, just as an extra little embellishment. So we're gonna go ahead and do that first. with this. Oh, I didn't clip the edge of it. There we go. Keep that from fraying. And we're just going to go around the edge here and get that attached all the way around. And then I also have to do the back side of this. I want to cover up that area that we talked about that um, doesn't have anything right there. And I've got an idea for that as well. So we'll get on that next. I really hope you guys are enjoying this video. I really do. I'm so excited about this. Okay, and we'll pat that down. And I do want to get my get my little lighter here. And I want to burn the edges of that trim so that it doesn't come apart. Okay. So now, we might as well, while we're here, I still kind of wish I had gone with that other trim, but it's okay. I'm going to decide how long I want this handle to be. Not too long. I think just maybe maybe about like that. So let's cut this off. And let's You know, I just feel like I have to cut this fabric on the inside at the top. I just have to because it's just so bulky right there. There we go. And we're going to do that on both sides. there. Now it just doesn't feel like it's so bulky. And we're going to glue this right in there, I think. Let's see. Where do we have that? Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Going to get a good amount of hot glue on there and I'm just going to pop this in between this trim and the pouch. Press it in there really good. And then making sure that we've got this going the same direction all the way down. I'll cut off this edge here. Whoops. And we're gonna do the same thing on this side putting a nice big dollop of hot glue on there 
and pressing it in and together. And I think I need to add just a little bit of glue on the inside there. And we're just going to press and hold this together for a minute just to make sure that it's stuck down really well. There. So, there we have our little handle and you can see it's held on there really well. And I'm thinking maybe, not just maybe, we're going to do it. I think I want to put a little uh, row of this trim on the inside edge of the pouch as well so that it's kind of coming, let me show you guys, right around the inner edge like that. I think that will kind of finish it off and give it a little bit more um, a little bit more elegance, a little more finished off edge and I think it'll look good because it goes with the other trim so I'm going to gently go around and tack this on. Right up to the top. I'm trying to get it as close to the top as I can. There. Okay. And I hope you guys have your cup of coffee handy that you're using to stay awake while you watch this video. <laughs> about you guys but I gotta ask a question and please make a comment down below I have noticed I watch a lot of YouTube videos now I I need inspiration I have to get it from somewhere and I get it from YouTube and I get it from Pinterest and some of my inspiration just comes from a spark that happens in my brain that says oh my goodness you need to try this and sometimes it comes from dreams I'll have a dream about something that I'm making and so I will take that dream and turn it into a reality because I think it's pretty cool so um, but anyway my question to you guys is you know Jeff and I will sit around in the evenings especially on the weekends we usually take like Friday or Saturday night and we will watch YouTube videos now granted most of them are not my videos most of them are woodworking videos um, that Jeff is watching to get inspired from and to learn how to do because he's still learning his CNC machine. Um, that is something that um, he's still in, in progress learning how to use it and, and how to do certain things and so forth. So. He watches a lot of CNC videos. And so, um, but I notice, and it happens every single time, we get to watching these videos, especially in the evenings, and both of us will fall asleep right in the middle of the videos. And it's so frustrating because we want to watch them, and we, we really, really, really enjoy them, but they put us to sleep. It's something about YouTube that makes you sleepy. And I don't know what it is or why. Um, but it's definitely something that we have noticed. And I'm wondering, have you guys had that same, uh, that same thing happen to you? So let me know in the comments section because I'm, I'm curious to know if it's just us or if it's everyone that has that problem. And I'm just looking over here, I'm looking to see if I have one more of these. Uh-oh, I dropped it. Where did it go? Doggone it. Oh, come on. 
come on. There it is. I was looking to see if I had one more cream colored rose here. I don't know that I need it, but don't want it there for sure. No, I think we're good. I think we're very good with that. Oh, and the one thing that I do want to add really quick, I do want to add some of my my pearl trim. And I tried to remind myself not to forget to use this because sometimes I do because I have it sitting off to the side and I do love using this in my projects because it just adds that certain little bit of detail that that really finishes off a project so I know I use it all the time but that's because I really really love it and we're going to put one over here and I think we'll do that one just like that finger stuck to it. And we're going to put one up here. I think we need a couple of them right in that section. Okay. So for this area, I think I'll go one All right, let's just start popping these guys in here. Oops, I left that one sitting there, doggone it. There's that one. <laughs> direction and this one on that side I just love these pearls because I think they're just super, they're like super lacy and and sh super shabby chic. They scream shabby chic. And they always just add that that bit of detail that I'm I'm always looking for in my projects. So and I think they add that touch of elegance that I like. And that one feels like it kind of came out too long. So we're going to go like this. And we're going to put that in there like that. And maybe pop that one right there. There. Okay. Um, okay. I got to stop messing with that rose. <laughs> All right. So it looks absolutely gorgeous. Now we're going to take this back side, and I have, I may use a piece of this on the front as well, but I have this bit of, um, it's just cotton fabric, I'm going to put that aside, and I think I'm going to make 
a little bow out of this. Just a little floppy bow. And I have some more over here that is smaller bits. So I just doubled that rose, or the rose, that loop, the loops. And I'm going to take it and tie this piece around it. Getting it right in the center there. You know what? Do, do, do. I think, actually, oh, I don't want to use that one. Um, this will go okay on the back side. I'm, it may not be big enough, though. I don't know. I don't want to waste this lace if it's not going to be right. So we're going to go like this. Mm, let's try this first. Let's go with our original plan first. Now what did I do with my other piece? There we go. Nope, that wasn't it. Where is it? Here? Let's go ahead and finish this one because this is nice and shabby. It's just not all lacy like the other bits that are in this, so that's where I'm my concern comes in. Although it does look kind of pretty there. Let's cut this off and see what it see what it does. I also have this stuff here that I thought I could do a little bow out of, but I don't know. I think I'm gonna try this first. need to be a little bit shorter. So that on the back with maybe, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Maybe one of these little rolled roses or two. I think that looks kind of pretty, actually. Looks very nice. And it looks very shabby. Let me stand over it for a second here. Um, I didn't use those on there, so I don't think I want to go with that. I do have this little uh, crocheted flower that would be pretty on that. Something like that. Okay, or we could take the other flower like that and put it there, but it's just a little too big, I think. Um, that really looks pretty. Or I could take and go like this. Oh, that looks kind of, oh, wrong side, whoopsies. I was going to say, that didn't look very nice.
Okay, you guys, let's see. Maybe I should just go like that. I think that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna decide. We're gonna put this right in the middle there. And we're gonna put this right there. I love, love, love this little crocheted flower that Gail sent me. She only sent me one. Um and I really love it. I wish I knew how to crochet so that I could make little embellishments like this. Because I really do think they're, they're gorgeous. I'm not patient enough to sit and crochet big old blankets and things like that. But little stuff like this, I think I could do. I got glue on that. I think I could do and you know just sitting in front of the TV but I can't do it I just can't crochet I I stink at it and I don't know why my mother-in-law tried so hard to teach me how to do it and I am one of those people that I can't get my stitches right because one section will be loose and the next section will be tight and then everything looks wrong so I just can't crochet but I wonder if maybe I might be able to do little stuff like this and have it come out okay because this is the the small yarn you know and I might be able to do that I'm gonna have to give it a shot I don't know if I can follow the directions either I'm terrible with directions so that looks really pretty on the back side. I like it. And there's the front side. And um, let me see one more thing. I'm looking for a piece of lace here. And this is a really pretty one. I'm just thinking maybe a bow of some sort on the front. This is a little too thick though. Okay, let's find a thin lace, thin lace. Oh, I didn't see that one, darn it. Um, this one's pretty, but it's not very big. It would just be a one loop bow. But that's really all we need for this. Maybe up kind of at the top corner. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put you guys on hold for a second. I'm gonna go look through my other laces and see if I can find a thin lace that I can make one single bow to put up in this corner. Okay, so I found a piece of lace that I'm going to use. This is a nice floppy, thin, soft lace and this is what I like to use when I'm making bows the best um, and then look what I found going through all that stuff I found some more of the uh, pretty dangly trims and things that Gail sent me here's one that would have been pretty um, but this one I love this trim and I can't wait I see more pouches in my future um, and then this one look at this one how pretty is that? Oh my goodness. I've got some beautiful dangle trims. Gail sent me a bunch of them. Um, so I'm excited to, I'm actually excited to make another pouch. But I've got several projects in the works right now. And I'm just, I'm trying to make sure that I get them all done before I start thinking up new projects. Um, although this pouch project <laughs> was something that I came up with yesterday and I already had other projects on my mind, but when I thought of this, I just had to do it because I've been wanting to make a pouch for a while and I just keep forgetting Okay, so I just doubled the loops 
I guess I should do that again because I didn't I didn't do a very good job. So I'm just going to take and have a, a piece sitting in the back end and I'm going to make two larger loops like this and then I'll make two smaller loops that come in a little ways and I didn't get that even so I'm going to do this again one big loop and a smaller loop Okay, and there I think I've got it pretty close to even as far as my pieces that are that are hanging off. And then I have a little piece, oh, and I just covered it with all of this other stuff. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. I have this little piece that I cut off the edge of this that was um, had fabric under it, so I just cut it off the top edge. And we're going to take that and put that around the center here to tie it off. And I'm just going to tie this in a knot. On the back side. There we go. And I'm going to cut that off because we don't need it. And there we have a lovely, lovely bow. And what we're going to do with that is I'm going to put it, let's get all of this other stuff out of the way. So we're not going to use that. And get this positioned where we want it. I think I'm going to put it right there at the top. Get my glue, put a nice little heavy dollop of glue. Whoops. Without getting your, your legs of your ribbon or your bow stuck in it. And press it down. And I'm going to cut these so that they aren't too long. Just like that. And then I'm going to take and put a flower in the center of that. Let's just see which flower we want to use. We could use one of those, but it's too dark. I want to go light on this center flower. I do have this little rolled flower that I made, but it actually does go nicely with the trim here, but... Ah, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Nope. Um... I don't want to use a paper rose. I want to use definitely one of my handmade roses, and that's just too, way, way, way too big. Let's see, I've got my little box of different rolled flowers here. This one is not too bad. These are too light pink. I have that, but that kind of goes off into another color world, so we don't want to do that. Too different in style. Oh my goodness, what am I going to use here, you guys? Um, I just don't have anything of my in my bag of flowers here. Oh boy. Um... It's just too dark. I think it's going to be this one, you guys, because I think this one actually kind of blends in the best. So let's get these out of our way. Oh, 
I had a lot of people that really liked this this shabby flower that I did with the eyelash trim in the center. I think that eyelash trim made a really nice center for that flower. I'll be doing some more like that, I think. Okay. Oh, now what did I do? I threw the... Where did I throw my flower? Oh my goodness, you guys. I'm so bad. What did I do with it? my goodness. Of course it would be the one flower. Oh, you know what? I bet I put it in this bag. I did. There it is. Okay. So we're going to make that decision. We're going to put this little rolled rose. I had a tiny piece of this fabric that Gail had sent me. So I made two little rolled roses. I did this one and this little tiny one. And I think we'll just go ahead and we'll use the tiny one as well, just to keep them both together. And we'll put the little one back down in this edge here, kind of coming down off of the other one. Pretty, pretty. And then I'm going to just add a little bit of hot glue to make sure that this ribbon or that this uh, bow is held down well and doesn't come off. There we go. We're going to go like that, and like that. And you guys, I think we're finally done with this project. This is my latest version of a shabby little pouch purse. And I think it came out absolutely gorgeous. And I hope you guys like it too. Let me see. If I put this down underneath it, if you guys can get a better look at it without that dark gray background. So that's what she came out like, you guys. Isn't it beautiful? I just love it. And this was so fun. You guys make your own no-sew shabby pouches. Look at this. It's just gorgeous. And fun, 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 and I'm going to be making some more of these. I just know it. I see them coming, and I may even make another one later on today if I have time, but it'll be probably in different fabrics and stuff, so look at this, you guys. It's, it's just fun times, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. Um, I'll be bringing you lots more tutorials um, coming up. I've got probably a hundred of them on my brain and um, I've got uh, I do have this little butterfly that I'm going to be doing something with it's on a little stand this is something that Gail sent me and I can't wait to do this and I've also got I'm going to go grab it real quick and show you guys really fast If I can get it in the camera, I don't know if I'll be able to do a video on this one. Um, I'd have to set do a completely different setup. But I've got this birdhouse. And this birdhouse, I'm going to back you off just a little bit. Whoops. Whoops, wrong way. Oh, boy. Um, let's see. Okay. So there's the birdhouse. It's big. 
Jeff built the birdhouse. I had painted the birdhouse and I, I made, we made this for my mother-in-law years and years ago. And it's just the most beautiful, most sturdy birdhouse you ever saw. Um, and I had put this little bird in here and I had it all painted. You can see in areas where the flowers and stuff that I had painted on here were raised and it was beautiful for its day. Um, but it's not really my style and I'm not willing to give this birdhouse up. I love it so much and I loved it when it was painted but it just needed, it needed a, a sprucing up. It needed a change. So I'm going to be altering this birdhouse and I just, what I did was I just used my Rust-Oleum Paint Plus Primer and painted the entire thing white and I'm going to take it from there. So I will be altering this. I'll fix my camera so that you guys can, can watch me do it. This is going to be an awesome project. I think it's going to turn out gorgeous. And this is one that I will be keeping for myself. I won't be selling this uh, birdhouse. So um, this will stay in the family forever, hopefully. And hopefully I can turn it into something that, you know, the next generation will want to keep and maybe alter themselves. Um, but anyway, so stay tuned. I'm going to be working on that pretty soon. And then I also found some little, um, at my little local store that I shop at, I found these little um, easels with these chalkboard pieces on them that I'm going to be altering and um, turning into something pretty. I think I got three of the hearts and I only got one square. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be doing these and, and coming up with something really pretty for these. So um, that's kind of what I've got coming up in the near future, things that I'm going to be doing. And um, so there's our pouch, you guys. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. I would so greatly appreciate it. We're working real hard to grow the channel right now. And... Um, I think that, you know, if I can just kind of stay at a good momentum, we'll get this channel to grow. Um, my goal right now is just to get to the 7,000 subscriber mark. And once I hit that, I think my next goal is going to be that 10,000 subscriber mark. So um, I would love to get there. It's taking, it's a long time, a lot of work. And I'm not quite sure what to do to get this channel going even faster, but um, I'm, I'm reading up on it. I'm trying to study everything that I need to study to figure out how to get more people, get YouTube to put my videos in front of more people. And one of the ways that I can do that is if you guys hit the thumbs up or thumbs down if you hated the video and make comments. The more comments I can get on my videos, the better off I'm gonna be and the better off I will be in the algorithms with YouTube and they'll start putting me in front of more viewers. Um, I know that I just recently monetized my channel and um, hopefully that's you know going okay for you guys. Um, but it was something that I needed to do and so I'm, I'm working at it, you guys. Any uh, tips, tricks, ideas that you have to help me to do better, please, please, please give me those um, comments and suggestions because I will take them to heart and try and um, do better. If, if I need to change things up, then I will do that. Um, so anyway, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I would so greatly appreciate it. And um, stick around because there's a lot of great stuff coming up. And everybody, have a really blessed day. Um, I love you all. And I have the very best subscriber community around. And I, I know I tell you guys that all the time, but I really, really do. I have the best subscribers I could ever even wish for. So thank you all for being so great. Thank you to all of you who've been supporting my Etsy shop. Don't forget this month we're giving away the blessed box um, with the pen in it um, in the Etsy shop giveaway. And it's for people who spend $50 or more. Um, will be entered into that raffle. Don't forget it's Christmas, so there's lots of things in my shop that are great for Christmas gifts. This will be going into my shop um, for sure, and so be on the lookout for that. And everybody, 
again, have a blessed day. Take care, and we'll see you real soon in the next video. Stay tuned for pictures. Bye-bye.